JJ the CPA here, hope you're doing well. This video is really for people that have read the law, so it would probably be for those that have actually read it. I'm gonna be talking about section 1106 of the CARES Act. I would assume that if you're listening to this that you're familiar with it, as well as section 1102. Um, what I wanted to point out is that before you even get to 1106, that you had to have first spent the money accordingly which is 75% on payroll, 25% on the other qualified expenses. So those things have to be met. And then when you're applying uh, 1106, specifically D, you're applying it to the whole amount of the loan, not just the payroll amount. So you're taking the entire amount of the loan, the entire amount of forgiveness and applying um, the items that are in two, three, four, and five. So it's not just the payroll. The other aspect is that if you don't spend the money, okay, then you're not going to be forgiven because of 1106D. So if no one spent the money and their money's just all sitting right there to go to an extreme, and then for some reason, somehow, they meet all these qualifications and they hit this spot on uh, 11D5, they're not gonna get forgiveness of all the money that's sitting there. If that's what you think, you need to just stop listening right now and go back and get yourself a little more familiar with 1102 before you even try and digest this 1106, okay? I've got other videos or you can just go read it yourself. So when you read 1106D, what it makes clear is that this is limits on the forgiveness. It makes it clear that this doesn't increase forgiveness. Now, what does that mean? What I just said, if the money's not spent, there's no way that any of these provisions are going to now say, oh, well, the money that wasn't spent is forgiven. Now, when you look at 1106D, for those of you that are really trying to get down into the cracks and really trying to figure out, you know, what's this all say? And I don't even mean that from a standpoint of you're trying to figure out how to work through the system, but what you really need to pay attention to, which I'm sure we all uh, assume we are, but uh, on 1106D2, just make sure that you're really focusing in on the word average and the fact that it says each payroll period. So it can't just be you're looking at what are the number of employees on whatever day you want to pick? So when it says average during the covered period, that's the average in the eight weeks, and it says per payroll period, not what is it at the end of the payroll period. <clears throat> the other aspect is when it says the average number of employees from 215 to 630, 19, it is payroll period by payroll period, or average of 1120 to 22920, okay? It's the average. So really focus in on that. So if you're if you're uh, if your clients are wanting you to make a judgment, I'm assuming you would not make any judgments until you had all of these inf until you had all this information in front of you, at least the information from the past because that's obtainable. And so if, you're, if your clients are asking you to make a determination on the forgiveness and they haven't even gotten the money yet or right at the beginning of the money, I would assume before you make a statement that something is going to be A-OK -okay and forgivable because of 1106D5, that you would at least have the information in front of you that talks about the averages from 215.19 to 630.19 or the average from 121.20 to 229.20. When you look at then section three, it says a wages according to B in that subsection, reduction in total of any employee or the total wages, okay? So it's saying total and the employee both looked at and in excess of 25% of the most recent quarter that the employee was employed. So it's not just total, it's each employee and you're comparing it to the recent quarter. 
And then in number five, it says that number two and three doesn't apply. Okay, so we kind of just, I think we go right to that and then we go, oh, well, number two and a three doesn't apply, which means that, oh, it doesn't matter about the average head count. Oh, and it doesn't matter if there was, you know, a reduction in salary and any of that stuff if they meet section five. So make sure you're really paying attention to section five. And if you haven't read section five and really peeled it apart, then you really shouldn't be telling your clients that they're going to be okay on for forgiveness. If anything, just liability. Um, and until anybody would give me all this information, I'm not going to tell my clients they're fine. First of all, I prepare tax returns. Um, and unless you're the bank that provided the funds, I don't know if you really should be providing any advice in this manner. But anyways, in number five, it says number two and doesn't apply, but have you paid attention to the fact that it says from 2.15.20 to 30 days past the enactment. So from 2.15.20 to April 27th, 2020, that period, okay, take that period, and then you take the number of employees in that period compared to February 15th, 2020, okay? So if they've done away with that reduction, okay? Number of employees from here to here, no later than June 30. And if you're just gonna, if you're just gonna hang your hat right here, I don't even know why you're listening to the video. No later than 6.30, 20, you've eliminated the number in the reduction, okay? Then it says, if you read down to the read down further, you're gonna see that this is an either or, that uh, no later than 6.30.20, okay? You've eliminated, the, the client has, the salary reduction, and you're comparing February 15th, 2020, through April 27th, 2020, as compared to 2.15.20, if that reduction has been eliminated by 6.30.20. So there just seems to be somehow this uh, thought, this magical thought that if on the last day you've rehired everybody and you said, y'all have your jobs back and there's your pay and there's your pay and there's your pay and there's your pay, that somehow this is making everything just be forgiven. So I'm going to go back and say, if they didn't spend the money, this doesn't do anything for them for the portion that they didn't spend. Okay? If they didn't spend it, that's not getting forgiven, period. Okay? I'm hearing a, a number of comments and emails saying, well, that my banker or my CPA or my advisor told me that, well, if I just rehire everybody by June 30, get my head count up and rehire them, then everything's forgiven. Okay? If you didn't spend the money, okay, this ain't doing nothing for you on that. Okay? You're not going to get forgiven for not spending money. You're going to owe that back, whatever you didn't spend. Now, for the yahoos uh, that are indicating that, well, based on number five, okay, um, let's say that uh, the client did spend all the money, right? They meet the parameters, at least 75% went to payroll, no more than 25% went to the other expenses. And they say, well, I mean, we don't even have to worry about the reduction of employees, the reduction in salary, if by June 30, they've eliminated the number and they've eliminated the reduction in salary. So let's just really think about this for a second. Um, don't you think the SBA is gonna come out with some further clarification of actually how you prove that? I mean, is it just, Oh, so for one day, I brought everybody back on, I gave them pay, and then on July 1st, I say, oh, see everybody. Don't you think there's going to be some parameters here? I mean, I think we all know that the law came out, SBAs came out with three different major, you know, guidelines since then. I'm sure they're going to come out with additional guidelines. So really make sure you know all these different dates. Make sure that you know what numbers you're even comparing to. So, I, I mean... I don't have one client that's gone and got, has went and gotten that information. If you're somebody that's making a qualified, informed decision with your client, 
because you have all of these numbers, the averages and this average and this average. And then if you're able to go ahead in time, you know, you and Michael J. Fox, Marty McFly, you're able to go ahead and get in that DeLorean and then jump forward to July 1st, get out with your client and then say, hey client, what did you do? Tell me what you did here. And then you're able to jump back into present time. And then you say, okay, well, now I have all the facts and circumstances um, that says, here's what you did on June 30. Here's what are these periods. Here's all of this calculation. Here's this, here's that. You spent all the money. And yeah, you would be forgiven. I don't, why, 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 why is anybody making these recommendations to clients? It should be the bank only, number one. Okay, number two, um, are you really wanting to accept a fee to help somebody work through the math to then help them figure out how they can ensure that whatever it is they're going to try and spend to get to full forgiveness? Is it, is, you really want to get a fee participating in that? Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that there might be some that they're saying, well, hey, you know, tell me how this works because I've got employees that have left. I've got employees that have done this. You know, that's one thing if you're just trying to figure out, you know, like, well, should we let them go? Should we retain them? You know, what happens if we give a raise, right? So I, I think, you know, I'm not going to speak to any other profession other than CPAs on this one. But, you know, as CPAs, I think we're going to typically want to have all the facts and circumstances. Um, but I do think from one CPA to another, you better have all your facts and circumstances in front of you before you start making determinations that quite frankly, you have no bearing to make any argument on the behalf of that client when they're sitting in front of the bank. You don't represent them. There's no form 2848 that you get to go before the bank. The SBA is going to surely come out with additional um, guidelines. I mean, if you just look at number five, it'd just be really, you just, you would be a silly person. And I'm just saying now this in general, not to my fellow CPAs, but you would be silly to think that the SBA is not going to come out with some clarification or additional information to show that you've actually reduced down the number or, or you've reduced this um, or you've gotten rid of, I'm sorry, you've eliminated the reduction in the, in the headcount and you've eliminated the reduction in the salary. Really? You, I, I mean, just stop the video right now and please block me and never watch one of my videos again. If you think on June 30th, you, you, you don't even, you've, how long have you been practicing? How, how do you even hold a license or a credential of any kind? What kind of returns are you putting out if you think for one second that the SBA is not going to put some provisions in here to more accurately determine that somebody's actually done what is in number five. Still doesn't change the fact that they have to spend the money. They had to have spent the money. So then, those that are feeling coy and smart, I wonder how you get down to though part E. Okay, we all know about uh, true and correct and under penalties of perjury. If you don't, I don't. But when you get to part E of 1106, okay, does your clients know, do you know, that what they're required to provide is the pay rates of each employee, the payroll documentation of each payroll period, and not just for the eight weeks, but for all of these periods that apply. And even if they spent all of the money perfectly, at least 75% for payroll, no more than 25% in the other, the bank still has to go through this exercise because this limits the forgiveness. No way does D help the client if they didn't spend the money. And even if they did spend all the money, either way, the bank is doing this exercise in D. And when they hit E, they're providing the payroll records. And then it says this, okay? IRS payroll records, payroll records, the state payroll records, and unemployment filings, okay? 
So for those that are out there talking about the scheme, oh, hey, why don't you just send your employees on uh, go get some unemployment and then when you know it's almost up with the eight weeks you know spend all the money and or the scheme of send all your employees give yourself a big fat raise the two people that are going to stay back behind with you you're going to give them a big fat raise then you lower your salary you bring everybody back on you got the head count full salary's been done okay and, and what you're hanging your hat on is, oh, well, but by June 30, wait for this. Oh, but by June 30, it won't matter about headcount. It won't matter about salary reduction because here in number five, it says that if on June 30, I've got the headcount back up and I've gotten the salary back up. So for you smart asses out there, they're like, yeah, but the SBA can't do this and the SBA can't do that. And the SBA is not going to do that because if by June 30, we do this. And if you're like, you know, JJ, you know, you can talk about the future SBA and you're making up rules. Because if they just do it by June 30, we're good. So then let's look at section E, 3B. And here's where the crime's committed. And people want to throw around like, oh, it's not a crime. It's no, you can juggle numbers and... Really? But in E, 3, B, that person needs to certify. And so are you going to certify this with your client? I mean, heck, I'm, I'm providing videos on YouTube and people are making comments like, well, I relied on what you said. And thank you. But it says that you are going to certify that you took this money and used it to retain employees. Doesn't say in there that you took the money and you're going to certify that you spent all the money on payroll. It's a certification that you retain the employees. You're going to provide unemployment filings. The bank's going to be aware of who went and filed unemployment. You're going to your your client's going to have to provide payroll details and documentation of what each employee made and when they made it. They have to provide details of showing not just here's a total that someone wrote down on an Excel spreadsheet, but they're going to need to see it. When they're asking for the state filings, they're going to see month by month. When they're asking for the unemployment filings, they're going to be able to see this person claimed unemployment. This person wasn't paid for six weeks. And then they came back and they made quadruple the salary in the last two weeks. They're also going to see, well, here's all these employees that went. No one got paid for six weeks except these two or three people. They got paid a whole bunch. And then at the end, they brought a bunch of people back. And you go, well, yeah, what, but technically on D5, right there, I mean, I brought them back. You know, eliminated the salary reduction. Spend all the money. How are you going to certify 3B without committing a crime? How are you going to do that? You're going to contribute to your client committing a crime? And if you're taking it lightly, then how are you even providing any advice to anybody? How are you signing one tax return? If you don't take seriously one aspect of the law, the law specifically states that if you do not spend this money as it's guided, you're committing a crime. When you read the definitions and the discussions of payroll costs, okay, and when you read then the comparisons of the eight weeks and what it's comparing to, and the fact that it's averages in each one and what it's comparing to. It's clear that the intent of the law, which will then be the intent of the SBA, will be to absolutely ensure that someone didn't fire everybody, bring them back the last minute, pay themselves a bunch of money, or pay their employees a bunch of money at the end, 
and meet all of these technical requirements because it's not just an Excel spreadsheet that's being handed in. It's actual payroll records. So they have to first spend the money. If they don't spend the money, they're not going to get any somehow forgiveness of money they didn't spend because of D5. The other aspect is when you're going before the bank and you're going to provide all of that information, why do you think we're providing it? It does say in, uh, in E4 that the administrator can request any other documentation. The administrator is going to be the one that's uh, making a determination within 60 days of how much is going to be forgiven. So do you really think a banking institution that was supplied all this money by the SBA, do you think a banking institution that's now also going to certify and give to the SBA a certification that this amount is forgiven and therefore the government is going to say, oh, bank, boom, here's your full amount, we're good, you do the rest. Okay, So it isn't you, so you, sh you really shouldn't be providing any advice on this. It's not your job to guide the client on something like this. I don't care what you say. It's not your job. Okay, Your job may be whatever you define it to be, but on this, this is a grant and then it is a loan. It is a grant and then it's a loan. So if you want to guide your client in terms of gathering the information, you want to guide your client on helping them do the calculations, well, of course, that's fine. But if you're allowing your client to guide you into how do we maneuver all the way through this thing to ensure forgiveness, and then you're participating with your client and going, well, let's see. So if you send these people to do this, and then you increase these salaries for this, and then do a little hazard pay over here, and then make sure you bring them back by this date, and then you try and participate with this, um, or you're trying to make sure the, 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 the head count comes back up. Does that really sound like what you should be doing? I don't care if you're offended by this video. If you're offended, then you were considering it and you should thank me for putting this video in front of you, EAs, tax professionals, attorneys, and even bankers. Okay? Bring on the criticism because you know who doesn't appreciate criticism is those that we're actually planning to or are doing wrong. And there's been a couple of occasions something in my video has been brought up and I look at it and I'm like, oh, you know, I just I had a video, I made an error in, in the, my beginning number, right? It was just an innocent mistake. So I made a big you know, correction to it and made sure everybody was aware and made sure I commented to everybody, right? And then I had a couple of videos talking about the employee retention credit and before the IRS did its clarification. It was like, well, gosh, it seems like we can do this. And you go, well, shoot. So am I better than you? Why? No. I'm just giving an example that it's okay to help interpret. It's okay to provide numbers. But what's not okay is to help your client figure out right there, figure out how to make sure it's all forgiven. Okay? So, from my perspective, the first thing you have to be doing is scheming with that client to say, okay, so if these people go do this and these people go do that, then you shift this. It's a scheme. Because here's really the intent of the law. And if you don't see it any other way, then shame on you. Because here's, here's the intent. Here's the spirit of what is happening. Here is a grant. It's not a loan. Okay? We keep using this terminology. It is not a loan. It is a grant. It is a gift. This is money given to the employer. To do what? To pay its employees. 
compared to what? To what just happened. Here's the recent pay period. Here's the period of time from February 15th and then February 15th to March 27th. And then the eight weeks compared to the beginning of 2020 and the eight weeks be compared to uh, February 15th of 19 to June 30, 19. Those things also compared to what happened no later than June 30. So here's the thing. Your client says, hey, I got a, got a bunch of people who are going to go on unemployment. How do I make sure this is, unfor you know, how do I make sure that this is all forgiven? What? Hey, pause for a second. <laughs> if your employees go on unemployment and you don't spend the money, you just pay it back. You just give it back. Okay, so I've, I've, I've read comments like, well, there's nothing wrong with juggling. What are you juggling for? What are you juggling for? The intent and spirit of this is for that. So even if you're like, oh, high moral ground and, you know, all that good stuff. Well, you ever heard of ethics? I teach ethics. Does that mean I'm better than you? No, but I teach ethics. So why don't you think about your ethics classes? Lawyers, CPAs, EAs. And if you're offended right now, you should check yourself and you should ask yourself why you're offended. And if you're listening to this so that you can help spread the word that we need to do this properly and or stay the heck out of this, then I appreciate it. But what you better make sure before you just, just, off the cuff till, oh, you'll be fine. Because this is getting to be a very popular thing. Is, oh, you're fine. Just, you know, rehire everybody by June 30 and bring everybody back. Well, if they don't spend the money, that ain't happening on the money that didn't get spent. Okay, number one. Number two, go right to the end. You're going to certify, your client is, that you got this money and you retained employees. How is giving raises retaining employees? How is sending employees on unemployment to then give a bunch of bonuses when everybody returns or more to yourself or now you're hiring on family? How is that retaining employees? So I've done a couple of different videos and I've gotten comments that like, well, you don't know what you're talking about because you know, they're even misquoting the section. Okay. I know exactly what I'm talking about. 11.06.5. Everybody's hanging their hat on 11.06.5. Completely ignoring all of 11.02. Completely ignoring E3B. This isn't an Excel spreadsheet that's handed over. Okay, And then this is completely different than giving a client tax advice. This is different from a client who's spending their money to buy an asset and you're making determinations of when was it placed in service? When was it bought? When do we report this? Do we take bonus? Do we do 179? Is this a five year class life? Is it a 39? Okay. Cause the first thing you're doing is you're working with a client and it's their money. It's their asset and you're interpreting a tax law compared to what they spent. This is, this is not a territory that CPAs, EAs, and tax professionals, and probably attorneys that we're accustomed to and that we're dealing with. And if you happen to be one of these individuals and you're working with um, companies that are getting grants, then you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. So maybe the overall urging here is, is, is shut the hell up about trying to make determinations about how your client can get into trouble. And is that really what you want your legacy to be? You got a snafu because one of your clients then came and told the bank, and then the bank's looking at what you helped them put together. Think a bank for a second cares about who you are. 
You think an institution, not the banker that's kicking back and gives you a dozen golf balls, which are some of my best friends, okay? It's the underwriters who you never see. It's the bank examiners that you don't know who they are. And it's the SBA that is going to ferret out such things. Do you want to be involved with that? Is that the kind of professional you want to be? So there seems to be a theme because I've gotten some emails from CPAs trying to tell me that I'm making up rules as I go along and I'm, no, I'm not. You ever heard of ethics, right? You ever heard of ethics? You ever heard of morals? Oh, everybody's got different morals and different ethics. Okay, what's ethical about helping your client take money from the government and use it in a manner that ensures they don't have to pay it back, but that manner is clearly in a defrauding intention? How in the world does it compute that, oh, if I'm 10,000 away from forgiveness, can I just give myself a raise? Okay, this isn't talking to a client and they say, hey, if I wanna get this deduction before year end, what do I do if I bought it? You say, well, you, you have to buy it and you have to place it in service. Right? So from my perspective, uh, I have gotten also an, a lot of, um, probably more than these other comments, a lot of um, appreciation from CPAs and EAs and attorneys and, as well. Um, more, by, more by email and some by the comments. So uh, if, you, if you have issue with this, you're welcome to be all big time and put it in the comments. What I'd like you to do is send me an email with your phone number and I'll give you mine and we can talk about it. Happy to do it. Because if you need someone to talk it through with to help you do the right thing, I'll be that person for you. I'll be that person for you. Okay? And if your intent is to try and show me how you can defraud the government, you'll lose. So, jj at jjthecpahelp.com be, be an adult. Send the email, send your analysis, and then be sure to include all the language that you should properly include, like defraud and manipulate and hide and adjust and maneuver and reclass, adjust to actual. Make sure you use all that language appropriately. Take all the sections, break it down, Okay, so on my website, I've got an Excel spreadsheet where I take every section, okay? And there's a line item for every section. So then why don't you also send with to it, send with it that worksheet or make up your own worksheet, okay? And show me how you came up with this landmine map to avoid them all to help your client defraud the government. So it's disgusting that anybody would challenge somebody trying to say, hey guys, you know, spend what you need. Spend what you need. Okay. Well, I've got to hire more people. Okay. We'll hire more people. The way the math's going to work out is probably not going to happen. And if they technically bring people back, this is about retaining employees. It says right there in E3. It's about retaining, not hiring, not expanding, not raises. I mean, look at the definition of retain. So know your crap. Know your crap before you start spitting yours at me. Know your crap. And if you're going to give your client any advice, you sure the hell better know what the hell you're talking about. Just spouting around. But you wouldn't even know that it's D5.
Hell, I even have to look at it. So if you want to do it, I hope you get caught. I hope that that client does something so wrong and you're pulled into it and there's an email and the banking regulation comes in and you're strung up and you lose your license, EAs and CPAs and attorneys. Because in this, your job is not to find the roadmap for your client to defraud the government. Okay, when we're dealing with tax advice, is our job to help, how does this work to make, well, first of all, it's the client's money, number one. Number two, it's tax law, not low, not SBA and legal and loans and FDIC and all the things that go into that. So first of all, remember that, okay? We're not dealing with things that we deal with, okay? We're not. And if you're an attorney and you deal with these things and you're helping your client defraud, holy crap, I'm just gonna say it. You're an awful person. You're a terrible person. You're terrible. If you think that because you're a smart lawyer and you've examined the law, and if you do this and you do this and you do this and you do this, <laughs> so send me that brief. Use the proper terminology. Incriminate yourself, please. Don't you think that the SBA has attorneys and CPAs? Of course they do. They're looking at this and going, hey, Fred, boy, here's a spot where somebody's going to probably get us. You know, hey, Jackie, what do you think of this? Jackie's going to go, I already saw that one. Yeah, we better put in something of this. We better put on something of this. And then don't you think, though, that when the person goes in front of the bank, don't you think the banker's going to look at that and go, well, I mean, I'm not forgiving that. But why would I forgive this client, customer, when you clearly did things to maneuver it? Okay, now, am I talking about that someone got 50 cents more an hour because they worked a little later or they did a really good job? Maybe. Because if you have a thousand employees at 50 cents more an hour, it could make a difference. So when you, when you go into Target or Walmart or Walgreens or whatever, and it's like, oh, it's just a, it's just one of those little bubble guns. I mean, it's, I mean, it probably costs them a tenth of a penny. They're selling it for five cents. Just grab one of those. No big deal. Just grab it. Let's go. Huh? You big fat cats, all smart, figuring out how do, how do you how do you maneuver taking a five cent piece of gum? Well, because it's five cents, it doesn't matter. If you're offended right now, check yourself and you should be damn lucky you found this video. Damn lucky, because the universe put it right in front of you. I hope you lose sleep tonight. I hope you freaking lose your license. If for one second you think you should be contributing to helping your clients maneuver. So even when I'm talking with my own clients and they're just not, they're not understanding it. They think, okay, what do I got to do to get this forgiven? Like they're going to be punished. It's like, what, what do you mean? What are you going to do if it's not forgiven? You just pay it back. Well, what if everybody's gone? Then you have the money to pay it back. I mean, how do you meet any of these provisions if everybody's gone anyways? But everybody's gone and now, oh, we'll spend it on this and spend it on that. I mean, the law even says when you're looking at utilities and you're looking at rent and you're looking at payroll, it's what was going on basically February 15th. So from my perspective, it's our job as a CPA, prob I mean, EAs, but as a CPA, we are the second most trusted profession in the world behind the clergy. And in some areas and in some polls, we are more trusted and have more integrity than the clergy.
So when I keep hearing comments like, well, my CPA said this and my CPA said that, and I'm like, okay, well, is your CPA gonna be in front of the banker, number one? Go ask the bank. And then how's that go over? Or you as the CPA, as the attorney, as the EA, as the tax professional, as the investment professional, how's that go over? Hey, Jim at the bank, hey, Jim. Listen, uh, we got a client here together and uh, you know the, the, all their employees are on unemployment. What's the best way to make sure they get this all forgiven? Can they just give themselves a raise? Is that, is, that, is that what we can do? We can just give themselves a raise and they can give them bonuses when they come back. I'll tell you this right now, there's no banker that's gonna let that happen. And if there is, I hope they lose their job and go to jail because that's what happens. You think that banker's gonna be like, well, yeah, I mean, if they just do that, I mean, well, no one's running these numbers then. Then you're, you're talking with a banker and an attorney and a CPA and a client that no one has looked at these numbers then. Because I did a video and it says, you know, crazy calculation. And the crazy calculation is, look at all these parameters. And everybody's just like, oh, well, if they just hire people back and eliminate the salary reduction by the time we hit June 30, then everything's forgiven. And then people are thinking, oh, well, I don't have to spend any of the money. And if I just bring people back on June 30 and everybody's back, then this 100K is totally forgiven. <laughs> That's not the case at all. They have to spend the money. And even if they've spent the money, and you go, oh, they've met 5D. Ha ha. Well, what about E? You're going to counsel your client to say, well, hey, when you go in there, they're going to ask you this, say this, do that. Hey, you know what? Here, we'll just erase that right there. We're just going to erase that right there. We'll just do this. And get a hold of the payroll company. Hey, real quick, you know, change that 941 to say this. And then we need those in payroll records to say that. And we need those payroll records to say that. Let's think for a second here. You're involving the unemployment, federal government, state government. You're involving 941, so IRS, Social Security Administration, Medicare, IRS, said it twice, that's right, okay? And then you've got the banking institution, you have the SBA. And all these things affect what's going on, right? So one affects the other. Collusion. So really my overall theme is, is that, you know, maybe you should just tell, maybe you should just tell them check with the banker. Maybe not even make any opinion on it. That's what I'm doing. I'm just going to tell the client, you know, just check with the banker. Now, don't get me wrong, I am gonna tell clients, no, you, you can't give a raise. No, you can't send them on unemployment and then just hire them back at the end and everything's forgiven. I mean, you can send them on unemployment and have money left over and hand it back or send them on unemployment and have money left over and pay it back. Now, in the eight weeks, you can't do that. I mean, this is a grant, eight weeks. It's a grant. Get it through your head. Right? And, I've, and I've had CPAs and, and then just business owners, and they're like, well, I just, I'm not going to pay somebody to sit on the couch. Then don't. And then you'll have the money left over, and then you hand it back. But you know what E3 says? You got the money to retain the employees. So if you ask me, none of it should be forgiven then. Because if all you did was get the money and then kicked everybody out and then you spent on the 25%, you probably run the risk of not even having the 25% forgiven. Now, I think someone commented and they're like, you know, hey, we're not open. And in our state, there's a mandate and these employees are going to have to go on Unemployment, like what do I do now? Like I can't even pay the employees. You know, would I be able to still get the 25%? I'm like, well, I would think so. I mean, in the sense of there's an overriding factor here, 
money had, your employees are not going to be employed for whatever circumstances, and I guess I didn't verify the circumstances, whatever circumstances they were presenting. Yeah, you have an overriding factor. You're not able to spend the payroll. Yeah, I got the money. I wanted to retain the employees. Well, why didn't you? Well, hell, by the time I got the PPP money, this happened, this happened, this happened. They're all on unemployment. I did pay my rent, pay my utilities, all that. I've got 75% left over. Here's the 75%. Here's the circumstances that went along with it. And I, I bet you would get the 25% forgiven, but that's there was an overriding other governmental set of circumstances that created that circumstance. It wasn't one that was conjured up. You know, I bet someone asked the question, it's like, well, you know, what if I just don't spend any of it? And, and at the end, I'm like, well, <laughs> how'd you even qualify for it? How, how did you qualify for it? Are you going to have to spend money on rent and utilities? I mean, how did, how did, I understand rent and utilities was in consideration of it. But then wouldn't you also have employees? I mean, like, how, how the hell did you even qualify for the damn thing? And the thing, the, the fact of the matter is, is that it's not about, do I get to the end and here's an amount that is unforgiven, what do I do? Okay, because these are people saying, well, if I don't have the money, what do I do? Well, it's just not forgiven. Oh, okay. Now, if somebody took the money and they're like, I'm going to take the money, I'm going to pay out the 25%, you all go on to unemployment. Then you come back and you're like, did you pay any employees? No, you didn't. Because actually the certification says um, it was to get and retain employees and do all this other stuff. Hmm, interesting. You know, the FDIC and the SBA, you know, they oversee the banks, right? Well, banks never, ever, they never have problems. They never get their charter yanked. That just never happens, ever, ever. Sure it does. But I'll tell you this right now, there's not going to be banks playing games with this. You know why they're not going to play any games with this? Because they're not even dealing with their own money. They got 5% to hand it out. They're going to be able to take care of the loan after. Why is the why would a bank risk any of that on one Yahoo and one Yahoo's advisors that have clearly provided a lot of documentation to show that it didn't flow anything the way that it's supposed to, not to mention that on June 30, the SBA is going to come up with something that somehow will certify that those people actually were retained and were paid. I mean, don't you think it would be even a certification that says they're going to stay on, you know, for the next quarter or whatever the whatever it is? So if you're willing to certify stuff that's false and certify this is false and provide false documentation and lie and cheat and then just say, well, but it was, <laughs> I got away with it. 45. <laughs> then you're just an idiot. <laughs> you're just dumb. And the problem here is that it is, us, it is up to us as professionals, EAs, tax professionals, accountants, attorneys, financial advisors, CPAs, to guide our clients. And yes, to guide sometimes their morality, their ethics. So it starts with us or don't say anything. Just stay the hell out of it. I know a couple of CPAs here in Oklahoma that are just like, man, I just it's not what I do. I'm not getting into it. I do not want to get involved with this. I don't want to try and interpret it. I'm doing tax returns. What the hell do I want to try and figure this out for? 
right? The only reason I actually even started doing all this is I just was putting together videos for my clients on YouTube. And so I could send an email out to my clients and be like, okay, hey, we need to hurry and do this, get this gathered up, because I'm trying to tell a thousand people what to do all at the exact same time. And so it's just like, well, I'm gonna shoot videos. I've been doing videos for a couple of years and using it to get information out. I'm glad you watched the video. There's probably no one that's made it all the way here to 50 minutes. We're in the middle of a crisis. We are in the middle of a crisis. Government brought the brought the fire trucks. Okay, they didn't they didn't screw all the tires on just perfectly because as they're leaving the freaking fire station, they're putting the wheels on. They didn't put the fire hose in there properly because they're going two hundred miles an hour down the road trying to get to the houses that are on fire. And just the same as when I gave commentary to some of these banks that when the fire truck arrived and the hoses are coming out, they're like, whoa, 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 we need to, we will make sure we got the alarm permit to this house and we want plans. What, what you gonna do with this house after it burns? Are you, gonna, you gonna do something up the upstairs there? Whoa, 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 I don't know if we can put this fire out because are you a homeowner? Okay. So we can sit around and complain about it. And I'm sure those that didn't get the money have justification in complaining about it. But the ones that got the money <clears throat> to sit around and say, oh, that tire's not on there correctly. Oh, that hose isn't put out correctly. And then have a group of advisors that are surrounding the fire truck and the fire hose while the government and the SBA and the IRS are all working tirelessly to put out the fire. And everybody's like, oh, you see right there that, that tire's not on straight, so if we do this and we do that, then we don't have to do this and we don't have to do that. So while everybody's putting the fire out, you got a group of advisors, like, oh, look at his boots are off there, this and that, well, we better take note. Hey, here's how you're going. To here's how you're going to make sure you don't have to do this, and you don't have to pay for this. <laughs> this is the United States of America. Are you even an American citizen? Check yourself. You call yourself an American? We have a crisis and tragedy going on, and you're like. Well, if we maneuver here, and if we maneuver there, well, here's how you're not going to have to pay it back. <laughs> Houses are on fire. Fire trucks are out. Everybody's trying their hardest to help. And then we got some yahoos sitting back. And then if you're one of these advisors, you know, you're just like, well, yeah, it'll be fine. Don't do that. Don't. You better make sure you know what the hell you're talking about from 1102 to 1106 and all these freaking dates. How can you give any advice? Okay, here's what I told all my clients. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what you do on June 30. What matters is that you spent the money properly. That's what matters first. And then at the end, yeah, you're going to throw all the numbers in, the calculations come out, boom, 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 boom. If you replaced everybody June 30, then you replace everybody June 30. But shouldn't that just be because it happened? Not like, oh, get in here, get in, hurry, it's June 30, get on the payroll. You know, oh, here's 10 bucks for the day, boom, booyah. I just love all of the individuals that they were already thinking this way. Here, here, how can we help? 
I love the individuals that are checking their clients. And if you notice, this entire video has not been directed at the clients. It's not been directed at the business owner. Because they're looking to us. So make a choice. Say, hey, listen, just go talk to your banker. I don't know. Or, that doesn't sound like you should be doing that there, Fred. Janie. Well, isn't it okay if I... <laughs> what comes after that that actually is a good thing? That's not defrauding. And so he's like, well... What happens if I let everybody out or, you know, let them go on payroll? I mean, let them go on unemployment. Can I get it forgiven? No. How? I mean, 5D or D5, 1106D5. If you just think it's as easy as 1106 D5, you clearly haven't read this. You don't have numbers in front of you. Ugh, as my stepdad would say, you're insulting my intelligence. So to the person that can just walk in and grab themselves a five cent piece of bubble gum and thinks it's okay, well, guess what? There's no talking to you. And if this hadn't worked after 56 minutes and 46 seconds, in an attempt to save your soul as a professional, then all I ask is don't ever watch one of my videos again. I would love for you to send me an email and tell me how much you deplore me. And then I'd like you to tell me why. And if you're going to go through the effort of doing that, I'd like your dissertation and your calculation. Okay? Not just your, your spewed crap like a little two-year-old that's just reaching in the back of their diaper and slinging it. Bring some facts and circumstances. And don't just say, well, I talked to my banker. Well, he said it was fine. Well, I was checking with an attorney and he said it was fine. Really? Is that what you just say to the IRS too? For your tax credit? Is that what you say to the judge? Well, you know, I just, I mean, I checked over there with such and such and you said I could do it. <laughs> I'm just probably just doing this whole video for myself. I'm sure no one's watching this. <laughs> I'm just getting it out. I'm just getting it out. I'm just getting it out. And guess what? Almost not worth it. Almost not worth it. But I've done my duty. I've done my part. I've put it out there. And uh, yeah. Whew. But I do want you to remember one thing and don't ever forget it. You ready? Because I believe it. And I bet the same's for you. If you really dig deep, if you needed me to pull it out of you. For those that I didn't need to pull it out, you know what's coming next. And you would agree that it's the same for you in a spectacular way. Which is, you've never met a CPA quite like me. <laughs>